All right, Caleb, looks like we have the results from your interview. Let me tell you, me and the entire team were extremely impressed with your capabilities. Really? That's awesome. That being said, we came to the conclusion you're probably not the right fit for this role. But we're very thankful for you applying and you can always apply again next year. <laughs> nice to meet ya. No. 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 If only I used Pramp. If I used Pramp, I would have had unlimited interviews and I could have done it over and over again for free until I was a master. <laughs> <laughs> with Pramp, you get paired with another individual and do mock interviews using real technical questions. <laughs> I'm sure I would have got that position if I used Pramp beforehand. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm doing a commercial, obviously. <laughs> no! Uh, why? I should have used Pramp! <sighs> Go try Pramp out right now. Link in the description. Trust me, I understand the pain when it comes to getting a coding job. This video is just gonna be a couple tips that I used to get my first coding job, and hopefully you can do the same. It can be very frustrating though, because it seems like even the entry level beginner positions require more experience than you have. <laughs> Oh, hey, sweet. Oh, this is perfect for me. <laughs> I got an A in sweet app building. <laughs> Three years professional experience required, what? <sighs> you may have some experience from school, but now you want to take it to the next level, maybe get a software engineering position. So how exactly do you convince someone to hire you when you don't have any experience? Number one is to own the technical interview. You can have lots of experience and skills, but it all comes down to a very short interview whether or not you get a position. So if you do everything else in this video but fail at this point, you're not going to get a job very easily. I have been turned down from jobs, and I understand the pain and frustration it can cause, the pride build up, like how dare they turn me down because I can't code on a whiteboard. <sighs> Fortunately, there's a lot you can do to help with this. The first one, like mentioned earlier, is to check out Pramp. Another resource would be cracking the coding interview. I will put links to both of these resources in the description below. The second way to get a job is to start small. I feel like everybody has this pressure to be the lead senior distinguished engineer at Google. <laughs> Why not just start with an internship or a junior level development position? Or if all of these even seem out of reach, what I would recommend is volunteering. As a total noob, a volunteer organization is more likely to let you tinker with their stuff and potentially break things. That's because, you know, they're hurting for talent and they often don't have a lot of money to pay software engineers millions of dollars. So why don't you go build a website for your local church or build a flashcard app for your high school? Anything you can do to get some experience. And the main reason you want to do this is to build a portfolio, which is actually the third way to get a job. A portfolio is similar to a resume, but it's often a little bit more in depth and Often it's built on a web page, so you could actually build a website to show your portfolio. You could even have a GitHub account with some open source projects that you've started or have worked on. Another good example of a portfolio would be to develop an iPhone app and just use that as an example of something you've built. A portfolio could also consist of blogs on LinkedIn or on your own personal website. And the final example of a portfolio I got is to actually build your social media presence. So if you have a strong industry influence, companies are more likely to recognize you for your technical expertise. Fourth way is to stand out, and unfortunately, technology companies have made this very difficult to do. So if you apply for a position, you're more than likely not going to have any contact you can reach out to, to ask questions, or just to say, hi, I'm a real person. <laughs> Even if you call the company sometime and just say, hey, I applied for this position, could I talk to someone about it? They'll be like, mm, no. Bye. <laughs> so you have to think a little bit more creatively on how to stand out. And this is doing the obvious things like having a good cover letter or resume, but also building that portfolio, right? So my portfolio was my YouTube channel and this allowed me to stand out from my peers. My boss for my first coding job actually saw my YouTube channel and he understand that even if I didn't have 
expertise in one particular skill set, I would be able to pick up the knowledge and learn. So he offered me a position. Coming from a minimum wage job, this was a really good offer. Even still, I wasn't sure I wanted to take it until he uh, kind of explained how much he was gonna pay me, right? <laughs> so it went a little bit something like this. I really appreciate the offer, but I'm just not sure this job is for me. No, I totally understand. We'll pay you 18 bucks an hour. I'll take it. <laughs> Great, you'll start tomorrow. Although this was a huge increase in pay, I still had some expenses, so at the end of the day, I still had no money. <laughs> I'm out. The fifth way is to make it easy to get a hold of you. For example, someone comes across your website and they think, wow, this guy looks like he could really help us out, but there's no contact form. Well, you may have just lost yourself a potential job offer. So they check your social channels. Uh, your Twitter doesn't have a messaging option. Your LinkedIn doesn't exist. And basically you're impossible to get a hold of. You have to start thinking outside of just the jobs you applied for. What if in theory people came to you and gave you job offers? Wouldn't that be a lot better? So the first thing is to put a contact form on your website if you have one. Make sure you have a somewhat professional email, right? So if you're sending emails to people, make sure your email is not skaterchick74 at yahoo.com. The second thing you can do is have an up-to-date LinkedIn profile talking about your experiences and your achievements and everything like that. I can't even tell you how many recruiters message me on LinkedIn. And there's good recruiters and bad recruiters. There's ones that genuinely look at my profile and say, hey, he's a .NET developer. Let's give him an offer at this other company and see if he'd be a good fit. But the downside with LinkedIn is you're also going to get those recruiters that just spam everybody. <laughs> and it looks something like this. Hi, Caleb. I noticed you had experience in software developer. I think you'd be a great fit for our new opening, senior custodial engineer at large technology company. Please apply today. We have great benefits. Wow, it's really nice that you would reach out to me. Unfortunately, hi, Caleb, we haven't heard back from you. Did we say we have great benefits? <laughs> well, like I was trying to say, I'm not really looking at the moment. We appreciate your interest. Here's a URL for you to apply. <sighs> we have great benefits. The last way you can make it easy to get a hold of you is to have a full social presence. So make sure all your Twitter channels or Facebooks or whatever are up to date and that you're not posting crap on there you wouldn't say in front of a potential future boss. I've received two interviews thanks to Facebook messages. One of them actually turned into a job. So there you go. If I wasn't careful, I would have missed out on these opportunities and probably been homeless living under a bridge. So that is the conclusion of this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you guys. If you've enjoyed it, just ask that you would click the subscribe button. And if you really appreciate my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. And how about you give me your tips on how to get your first coding job. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.